Well, hello again. Been talking to a couple of the local guys on uh, the uh, the VHF repeater that we uh, that we all normally use, and they seem to be more interested in the uh, antenna analyzer I was using than the um, than the ATU or the or the button that I made. And uh, I thought, well, I'll just do a little piece on the on the UKIT's FG01 antenna analyzer because it's such a nice uh, it's a nice little unit. This is a carry bag, padded carry bag that I got from the local electronics shop, which is ideal for carrying the antenna analyzer kit. As you can see, there's my hand against the side to give you a, a bit of scale. It's not very big. Um, as, a, as a part of a portable um, arrangement, it's uh, really quite a convenient size. I'll just see if I can unzip it because I'm, I'm holding the camera with the, with my other hand. I haven't got it set up on the tripod because I did try doing a, a video on this previously and um, I couldn't get a good shot of the, uh, of the antenna analyzer. With the uh, thing with the camera on the tripod, so that's what's in the kit. Fits in there really neatly. And what's in here is uh, the top wants to spring shut, of course. What's in here is a little battery clip. There it takes three uh, AA cells. If you don't want to use the uh, Lion battery, that's also supplied to the unit. Um, the Lion battery is actually inside the unit, and I use that. Uh, that's just a couple of adapters that I put in the kit and I'll show you those in a second. Um, the charger that comes with it, um, good little charger, uh, just plugs in the top there, in there and uh, on the charger itself there's a, there's a little LED and it's red until the battery is charged and then it changes to, uh, changes to green which is really quite useful. Um, the instructions, the instructions I downloaded, I don't think the instructions came with it, but um, there's a, a reasonably, uh, reasonably well explained, in fact very well explained, because it's so simple to use, a uh, set of instructions, there's three pages, it's a bit difficult to open with one hand, but you get the, um, you get the gist, you've got a couple of pictures there of what you'd expect to see on the screen. Under uh, under certain circumstances, um, okay, we'll get that out of the way, and we'll get down to the unit. Oh yeah, I was going to show you the adapters. So I carry these uh, these adapters in the kit as well because um, these are these are going to interface with the usual sort of RF leads that uh, people use when they're out and about portable and what I use when I'm at about, out and about portable and these will adapt just unwrap all that and these will give me um, allow me to interface a uh, PL259 to the um, analyzer and also an end connector to the analyzer and what I'll do is I'll just give you a quick run through on the analyzer and then I'll show you the analyzer connected to an antenna. I'll do that as two separate videos because otherwise there's a lot of fumbling around uh, in between. Now um, I should be able to just set this up as I had it the other day. So if I stand that up like that and then I have the camera like that I need to prop it up on something. What about a... No, it's not really... Oh. I should really do better prep work, shouldn't I? Uh, let's just turn it on anyway, see what we've got there. Can we see all of that screen? No, we can't. Uh, it needs to be propped up a bit at the front. What did I use the other day? I used a couple of two dollar coins, didn't I? I think I've spent them. Oh, that might be okay. There we go. Oh, 
and now the uh, viewfinder's gone dark. Okay, well I hope that's focused. Um, basically the unit has uh, 10 memories. So uh, it's on memory 2 at the moment, which I've got set to 7093, which is a local 40 meter uh, chat frequency. Um, there's memory 1, which is 3.6, memory 0, which is 1.8, and uh, it increments in frequency as, uh, as you go through the memories. As I say, memory 0 to 9, so it's got 10 memories. Now, um, I'll just put it on memory 9, because memory 9 has just got a fudge frequency in it. It's not one that I'm really interested in storing. Um, I think memory 8 is the last one. Yeah, 52.8 is memory 8. So I'll put it on memory 9. Now, if I wanted to uh, put something into memory 9, I just press that. I go around to there. You've probably just seen the little arrowhead go around to CF, which is the CF there, which is the centre frequency. And it's showing 55.8. If I press and hold the knob like that, you can see that the end digit has started flashing red. Now if I want to change that digit, now it's gone to white, I can. See that? That's changing. That, that last digit. If I hold that again, that's flashing red, and I can move it along and I can change the next digit and the next digit and the next digit. So I can change the, I can change the frequency in megahertz. As you can see, that's 54, 3, 2, 1. I have to turn that around fast to get right the way down to um, 14 megs or whatever. So 14. And uh, again, I'll press and hold that. So I'm going from megahertz <clears throat> to hundreds of kilohertz. And it's showing 794 kilohertz. So I'll just change that to when it's gone white. I can change that now to 5. And then I'll press that again. Then I rotate the knob to the next, which is hundreds. I'll go white and I'll make that um, zero. Press it again. Then I'll move it to the last digit. And that's gone white and I'll change that to zero as well. So I've just changed that frequency from 58.8 or 55.8 to 14.6 uh, and uh, I want to store that in memory 9. So I just press that around to memory 9 then I press that in like that and you can see it's just saved it. Now this SW is sweep width which is set to uh, 2 megahertz which is set to 2 megahertz now if I wanted to store on memory 9 14.6 um, but have a wider sweep width I can do that just by going like that and then changing the sweep width so it's 5 megs 10 megs like that and then round to memory 9 and save that. Now when I go to memory 8, oops, there we go, that's gone to 52.8, that's 2 megs, and if I go to 7, it's another 2 meg sweep width, 2 meg sweep width there, 28.5. If I go back to memory 9, where are we? Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, you can see that it stored that sweep width as well as the frequency information in memory 9. So it's really very, very simple to use. And you can use, um, I was going to say you can use, it, it, but actually but what, what I was going to say would be better demonstrated when it's actually connected to a load. But you've got um, uh, SWR indicated down there and it's showing greater than 9 and the impedance is greater than 350 ohms because there's just there's no load connected to it at the moment. It's just, uh, it's just sitting there. What I'll do is I'll go and connect it to a load and then uh, I'll just do another short video. I'll call this part 1 and uh, I'll call the other bit part 2 where I actually show you uh, it connected to a load. Thanks for watching.